Foreign Intrigue, an exciting television drama played against the tense background of present-day Europe. Starring tonight, Gerald Moore as Christopher Storm. Produced in Europe, especially for television, by Sheldon Reynolds. Main Street in Vienna is a boulevard called The Ring. It encircles the oldest part of the city, including one of the former town palaces of the Habsburg dynasty. But there are other rings in Vienna. The city itself is a closed circle of the outside world, a special circle with special rules inside. But the mixture of people is highly spiced on this tight little island. And many of them have spent a lifetime living by their own rules. Wonderful place, Vienna. It's a shame I only can stay a few days. But next time I got the chance to come here, you will see. I will. <laughs> well, I got a busy day tomorrow, so I might as well. Anything wrong, sir? My, my wallet. My wallet. It's gone. <laughs> Perhaps you left it in another suit, sir. Oh, no, 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 I had it with me. I, I remember quite well. I had it with me. Oh, uh, what's the trouble? Mr. Hodge seems to have misplaced his wallet. Misplaced nothing. It's been stolen. What kind of place is this? Well, it's usually more quiet. Who are you? Christopher Storm. Storm? You own this place? What are you going to do about this? Mr. Hodge? Yes. What is it? I believe this is yours. It was found at the smoking room and turned it over to the desk. It's all there. Everything. I'm sorry. But it's just that... Uh, Quite all right. Uh, well, uh, I would like to meet the man who found it. And thank him, too. It was that man over there, Mr. Villacruz. The old man is pointing us out to him. Good evening. If I'm not intruding... Not at all, Mrs. Thomas. So, Mr. Hodge is asked to meet you. A pleasure, sir. I am Vedon de la Cruz. My sister Nita and Mr. Morgan, who we've also just met. I don't want to crash your party. I just want to thank you for finding my wallet. Oh, was that yours? I am glad. I know how worried you must have been. Most men carry their souvenirs of a lifetime in their wallets. Souvenirs, to say the least. <laughs> but I insist that you let me buy a drink. Oh, that isn't. That sounds fine. And I insist you to let me buy the second round. Sounds like the beginning of a party. May we invite you too? I'll try to catch up with you later. I'll accept that only as a promise. Then I'll try to keep it. In Vienna on vacation or business, Mr. Hodge. mating call you have. Sometimes known as a closing theme. It's late. It depends on how you feel. I feel early. Say, so I left you with three escorts. I left them with a deck of cards. And I've never seen Vienna at night. Never? Uh-uh. Would you like to? Hmm. Would you like to take a drive? 
Mm-hmm. Now, that's what I like, a woman who talks too much. You'll be crazy about me. I will open. How many cards? Two, please. One in, one only. Three. The same. And two for me. I'm good for a hundred. I'll raise you another hundred. Queen. Ace is full. Every time. I finally get a hand, and he has better. Our friend has certainly been lucky. Maybe. There's all kinds of luck. Some people make their own. Now, wait a minute, Stephen. Mr. Hodge is my guest here. I think you owe him an apology. Now I understand. You're all together in this, and I'm the sucker. That's ridiculous. I owe you something, all right. It's not an apology. He shot himself. Go see if anyone heard. I'm afraid so. Right through the heart. But it was an accident. Do we all know that? Hmm. The police may think differently. In any case, there will be a long and ugly investigation of us all. I don't relish the newspaper stories of myself accused of a gambling murder. Do you? I will be ruined. I'm traveling for a very conservative insurance company. My wife, my two boys in school. I'll be ordered out of Vienna. They will never let me come back. My whole life and work is here. There's no one in the halls, it's late. Listen, I can't afford to get mixed up in anything like this. We mustn't get panicky. What is done is done. I see no reason why we should all suffer for a stupid accident that Morgan brought on himself. I have some good friends in Vienna. For enough money on right places, what has happened here can be concealed and forgotten forever. You can have all my cash, and I'll sign all my traveler's checks over to you. All the money I have is on the table. I can get some more at home and be right back. A better hurry. I hope we can raise enough between us. Watch. Hmm. Oh, here, here. Take whatever you need. Hmm. Well, that I am carrying, I'm afraid, will still be so. There is a cashless check for five thousand dollars in it. Well, that might do it. Just leave everything to me now. I must have some help with the with the body, of course. Hodge, you go back to your room. You stay there. Yeah. Don't answer the phone, not the door. And try to leave Vienna just as soon as you can. Can you remain here for a while? And from now on, 
None of us know each other. Don't try to contact one another next week or even next year. Take no chances. I should thank you, but uh, no time for that. so humble, here we are. Mm -hmm. You're repeating yourself. <laughs> hey, you have to make a plane in the morning. The way I feel, who needs an aeroplane? <laughs> <laughs> Chris, don't ask me any questions. But I wish this was another night, in another place and that there were no aeroplanes in the morning. It sounds very wide awake and serious. It is, Mr. Stone. It's so serious I could cry. Anything I did? Everything you did. <sighs> Mr. Stone, Mr. Stone, wake up, boss. Such trouble. Oh, go away. I've got my own. You know, it's a tourist fellow named Hodge. He took a whole bunch of sleeping pills last night. Dead? I don't know. They rushed him to the hospital. But the police are all over the hotel. What should I tell them? Uh, what do you know? Nothing. That's what you tell them. Uh, Where are you going? The hospital to find out some more. That's a crazy hotel. Some people don't pay the bill, some people die. And they don't pay the bill either. That's when I gave them everything I had, including my company's cashier's check. I don't have the money to cover it, but I didn't even stop to think about that. When you did think about it, you tried sleeping pills, huh? Oh, no, that, that's not true. The overdose was an accident. I... I couldn't sleep. I... I took two pills. And I still couldn't sleep. A man had been killed, and I... <laughs> you took two more, and then two more. I suppose so. I don't remember. What the police say? I'm not to leave town. They are looking for the body. May be here quite a while. <sighs> Perhaps it would have been better that the maid hadn't found me this morning. How can I go home now? I misused my company's money, stolen it. You sure introduced you to nothing but trouble last night. Why don't you let me buy back the introduction for 5,000? The amount you borrowed from your company. You are not serious. I'll send you a check this afternoon. But, but why? Because a pretty girl took me for a sleigh ride last night, now I know why. A sleigh ride? For your speech, I'm betting everything you saw last night was staged by a very smooth confidence gang. Are you going to tell the police? You tell him. I'm going to find Mr. Morgan and his friends. Morgan? But he's dead. Like a former girlfriend of mine says, uh-uh. Anyway, not yet.
The world we live in can be a fumbling, scrambling snake pit. And I try to keep that in mind before I take a swing at the next guy. But I can get awfully mad at myself sometimes. Guys like Hodge shouldn't have to keep their guard up when they travel. Guys like me are supposed to do it for them. But I've been swimming around in a pair of big eyes last night. But then there are the accidental souvenirs of adventure, sometimes known as clues. The little lady and I might still have another dance. First step was to find out where Snow White and her four crooks might have run to. I didn't waste time with phony forwarding addresses. They were booked for the plane to Spain, but the airline called. And they didn't make it. Now you gotta figure out where they did go. Dodo, here's a special little gizmo for little pink ears. Let's find out where it came from, huh? Yes, sir. Starkey, you must have seen that baggage. How many pieces? Five. And when they arrived? Four. But this time they were taking Mr. Morgan's back, too. How were they dressed? Hat, gloves, and the girl wore a fur coat. A little warm for Spain this time of year. Mr. Storm, I think this comes from Sweden. No doubt about it. Now that sounds more like hat, coat, and gloves. Dodo, find the cab driver who took him to the airport, huh? Right away. And Starkey, I want to check on any telegrams or long-distance calls they may have made. The switchboard operator keeps in the record. Mm -hmm. No payoff on the telegrams, but the switchboard gal put me right on target. Dela Cruz had placed one long-distance call to the Park Hotel in Stockholm. Even before I spoke to the cab driver who had taken him to the airport, I put in a rush order for a ticket to Stockholm. Take me past the Park Hotel. I look just past it. fitted one of the descriptions I'd received from Hodge. I didn't know how many, if any of them, were actually living here. But anyone can read a register while he signs for a room. Only one man had signed in that morning. And I'm optimistic enough to see a resemblance between Morgan and Morton. But that didn't tell me where the rest of them were, including my girl with a vocabulary of sounds. I told the desk clerk that I was expecting a call from Vienna. I had a loose scheme that was worth a try, if I timed it right. Morning. Morning, sir. How many people? No. Would you take a table? No, I'll have coffee right here. All right. May I uh, use your phone? Yes, sir. You can use the phone here. Would you dial for me? I'm sorry, sir. Do you know the telephone number of the hotel across the street? Why, yes. Oh, well, good. What I'd like you to do is dial all the numbers except the last one. Hmm? But the hotel is just across the street. I don't understand oh, why. Well, it's a joke. My friends in the hotel will die laughing. Now, in a few minutes, I'll go across the street and go into the hotel. When I do, you pretend to be the long-distance operator. Say that you have a Vienna call for Mr. Christopher Storm. That's me. Mr. Christopher Storm. That's right. Can you do it? Yes, Mr. Storm. Good. Start dialing. Hello? All except the last number. Good. Here we go. But this is much too much. 
I've been saving. This is Vienna. I have a long distance call for Mr. Christopher Storm. Oh, Mr. Storm, I have the call you expected from Vienna. Oh, fine. I'll take it here. Hello. Hello, Inspector. Inspector Colmar. Yeah, fine. Everything's working out fine. I have a message from the dead man. Yeah, Mr. M. Yeah, he knows we're on to him. He's ready to talk business. If you could fly Hodge down here, then I'm sure we could round them all up. Well, of course I'm watching Mr. M. Without him, we don't have a case. Now, if my little friend would behave like a good pointer, everything would be perfect. He was worried enough. I knew that when he told Mr. Dela Cruz about it, that gentleman and his other friends would also be worried. Instead of taking aspirin, they would probably take a few guns and visit Mr. Morgan, the cause of their worries. <laughs> Poor Mr. Morgan. Is it? Chris! Himself. May I use your phone? Chris, what are you going to do? Listen. Hello, get me the police. No. Feel like screaming? Hello, I want to report three men who are on their way to commit a murder. Chris, after that evening we had, I was ready to drop all this. I wanted to tell you everything. Yes, dear. Yes, that's right. I'm Christopher Storm. Three men are on their way to the Park Hotel. They intend to kill their partner, a Mr. Morgan or Morton. It has to do with a con game that started at my hotel in Vienna. I'll be down to give you the details later, but you better hurry. You'll have to switch this call to homicide. Hey, you're welcome. You were saying? I mean it, Chris. Just like I meant it last night. I'm sure you do. You must believe it. I was drifting around when I ran into Dela Cruz. This isn't my kind of life. If I'd met you first, everything would have been different. It still can be different for us. It won't be easy. I'll have to cover up. Dela Cruz may talk. You could do it, Chris. Nobody asks you questions in Vienna. We could catch the evening plane. We could. Hold on to me, Chris. People like us don't get lucky very often. Get your coat. Let's get out of here. It'll only take me a moment to pack. No time for that. Just get your coat. <laughs> to the beginning, Chris. Skull. Police headquarters. 